I see you two have the beakers out again, and lab coats now too. Um, should I be afraid? Don't worry, Mom. We're just doing some mad kitchen science. Matter. That's what everything is made out of, including chocolate. Today, we are here to share with you a lot of facts and even a few experiments about matter. Now, the first thing you need to know about matter is that it has three forms. A solid, a liquid, and a gas. What's that? Well, think of these two oranges as two molecules, which are the smallest units of matter. When matter is in its solid state, the molecules are tight together and don't move much, like this. That's why solid things like this bowl are hard and you can't stick your hand through them. Stupid bowl! On the opposite end, we have gases. With gas, the molecules are far apart, like this, which allows you to walk right through it. The air we're breathing right now is gas. Because Sophie's breath is gas, and gases can take any shape, this allows her to blow the balloon. The gas from her breath goes into the balloon, and because the molecules are constantly moving, it pushes on the sides of the balloon, therefore making it bigger. <laughs> now, right in between solids and gases, we have liquids. With liquids, the molecules are closer together than gases, but farther apart than solids. Much like this. See how there's gaps that you can stick your hands in? Because of this, the matter and water sticks together more loosely. See, it surrounds my hand. Like a gas, you can still put your hand through it, but you feel more resistance, don't you, Self? Yes. <laughs> because liquids are in between solids and gases, they're considered a transition, or in-between state. Now, we have some fun experiments to show you all the three stages, solid, liquid, and gas. But sadly, not plasma. For our experiment, we only need two things. An ice cube and our griddle. You can also use a pan and a stove, but make sure to have parental supervision. We have mom here. Hello. Remember those three states of matter Alex mentioned earlier. Solid, liquid, and gas. Well, ice is a solid. See, I can't stick my fing finger through it. But ice melts into water. See, the the matter flows around my hand. Yes, water, which is a transition state between solid and gas, which what, which is what water turns into when it hits the heat of the griddle. See that steam? That's a gas. Exactly. So. You're probably wondering what this all has to do with chocolate, right? Remember last week when we made our Valentine's chocolates? Then, we used the process of melting to melt on the solid chocolate, like the ice cube, into liquid chocolates, like the water. And we do the same thing while melting chocolate, which is the technique we'll be showing you next. You can melt chocolate on the stovetop using a double boiler or in the microwave. Today, we're going to be doing it in the microwave because Sophia has perfected the technique. I also personally think it's the best method, method to use when you'll be using the chocolate with kids for the final product or melting it with them. There's three things you got to know before you start. The do's and don'ts, kind of. First of all, don't overheat your chocolate. I know from experience that if you overheat it, it'll like get all clumpy and it'll look like brownies, but it will not taste like them, so trust me on this. And you can save it by adding a little oil if you um, want to, but it's best to just take it slowly. And then the second, water, just make sure like, you're not like microwaving it with a cup of water or liquids, really. Make sure no liquid splashes in it because? Well, if you get a liquid in it, then same thing happens. You'll start to seize up and get all clumpy and bad stuff. 
And the third, you, you gotta have patience. Our microwave has a 30 second button, so that's kind of nice. Just sometimes you can take 30 seconds at a time. And also you don't want to put it on a minute or two minutes because if you overheat it, it gets... Clumpy, looks like brownies, taste. <laughs> yes. First thing we have to do to get our melted cho chocolate ready is to put them in the bowl. And microwaving it is what I do all the time. But also, if you want to microwave it three times, sure. But I usually, when you, when you microwave it once for 30 seconds, because that's what I do, I take it out and then I stir it because there's still some melting stuff on the bottom. And so that makes it melt faster. And then I put it in the microwave again for 30 seconds. And then there's still going to be clumps in there, but you have to stir it up good. And then it's all smooth and good. Now that the chocolate's all melted, let's make some chocolate candies. Well, since the chocolate's all melted, we are going to get started on the chocolate covered pretzel sticks and the chocolate candies. Because there's never too much chocolate candy. In the meantime, you can check us out online at www.twokidscooking.com. Happy, Happy family, family cooking, cooking everyone! everyone.